Man, sometimes I just can't believe my luck. I must have done something really good lately because I'm just, there's, there's too many synchronicities for it to be coincidence. Check it out. A couple weeks ago, I'm driving down the road in my van. Kylie, my girlfriend's by my side and we're just talking about van life. If you haven't heard, this summer I'm working on a documentary called Van Boom. It explores why van life is resurging and trending. It's gonna be a really good movie, so make sure to check that out. Anyway, we're driving down the road and just kinda of having a discussion. I tell Kylie, this summer we've been really fortunate enough to interview a bunch of cool people, a bunch of van life founders, if you will. People like Alan Feld from Sportsmobile, people like Dave Hoskins from Illuminous. All of this has helped us learn about all the intricacies of van life from the beginning. Throughout those interviews, another name has been popping up over and over again, Quigley Motors. But Quigley's on the East Coast and I have no contact with them thus far. So I told Kylie, I feel like we interviewed the West Coast people. It'd be really nice to interview the East Coast people to get their perspective, see how it differs. And I left it at that. I didn't, there was no action on my part. I didn't reach out to Quigley, but I kid you not, two hours after I initially planted that seed, after I discussed this with Kylie, I got an email from Quigley Motors. And Quigley was like, Sergey, we'd love to be part of your movie. We'd love to be interviewed. We'll give you a factory tour if you want. Come out to the East Coast and come be our guest. So I hopped on a plane <laughs> pretty quickly within like a week. I hopped on a plane, flew to New York, rented a car, drove to Manchester where Quigley Motors is located. I got an exclusive factory tour that I'm going to share with you in this video. I got a bunch of really good interview stuff that will go in the movie later on. So definitely make sure that you look for that uh, sometime in October, November. And I just feel incredibly grateful. I mean, this has been an incredible journey that just keeps getting better. In the interest of full disclosure, I feel the need to say that this is not a paid advertisement for Quigley Motors. I flew to the East Coast on my own dime. I paid for airfare, hotels, rental car, food. Everything came out of my pocket. And this is purely for the documentary, for learning purposes. If you've never heard of Quigley before, let me just briefly say that they are a super badass company. They've been in business for over 50 years. They take two-wheel drive vans and convert them to true four-wheel drive vehicles. So if this is something that you're in the market for, definitely stay tuned because you can actually see in this video how vans get transformed. And finally, I just wanna give a big shout out to Dave. Thank you so much for making contact, for reaching out. And I also wanna thank everybody at Quigley, Mike Quigley, Todd Quigley specifically, for giving me so much time and attention and for giving me a kick butt tour. So without further ado, let's go on a Quigley 4x4 factory tour. My name is Ty Quigley, I'm the Vice President of Quigley Motors and I'm about ready to take you on a factory tour. Hey, this is our facility. What you're looking at now, the first couple bays is our quality control and our alignment section. I'm interested in everything, just so you know. So if you okay. scramble, that's great. Oh, okay. All right. Um, here at Quigley's, everything uh, we receive in, all the vehicles we receive in, we weigh the vehicle front and rear axle. Uh, and when the vehicles are complete, we bring the vehicle back in and we re-weigh re re the vehicle. Um, mm -hmm. That data is stored in our engineering. That helps us determine our center of gravities, um, how much uh, material we're adding, how much we're taking off. Uh, so all that information is important. And by doing so, we have our scales. It's a digital scale. We have it set here 
on the floor so it's easy in, easy out for our transportation company or our transportation department to uh, get us the data we need. Okay. And where does it read? It reads over here on the wall. How much do I weigh? You weigh 202 pounds. Right we'll edit that part out. There you go. <laughs> I was going to say, well, I weigh 202 pounds. That would have been nice. Heavy camera. Yeah. Obviously. There you go. All right, so this brings us back to our QC department. This is the final stage of the vehicle. Uh, we have uh, four gentlemen in our QC department. Uh, over here to the left of, the, uh, of this area is the alignment bay. Uh, every vehicle that we put four-wheel drive system in has to be realigned because, of course, we're taking the front suspension out and we're adding our own suspension and components. Our alignment bay, it's a snap-on, it's all digital. Um, you can see this arm here. These are your cameras. What they'll do is you have four posts. We can walk around this side. These are the targets. The targets you actually put onto the wheels of the vehicle. And then while it sits on the lift, you can raise the lift up so they can get underneath if they have to make any adjustments. But the camera will follow the targets. And then what it will do, it will read out on screen. So that way we have to make any type of adjustments we can. And uh, once we're finished with it, we make a final print out of that uh, inspection, of the alignment inspection for the final file. And then we also send that to the customer so the customer knows if they ever, you know, if they're ever worried about the front end, if they feel like they might need alignment, they can take it to alignment shop, they know what specs to align it to. Okay, one spec. Mm -hmm. This is where the actual part takes nice. Yeah, these plates here, they keep the wheels free, so you can pivot the wheels back and forth because it has to have that motion as well. And then part of it, you also roll it back and roll it forward, and the camera follows everything. All right. Everything you see behind us here is, this is all of our current production. Um, we have the, the, this is our internal warehouse uh, here on the floor for our current production. The, the floor level up to probably the second level is current production. Above that would be the, what just came out of production. Uh, we still have the parts for customer service and whatnot. Our older items would be way up high or either out in the warehouse. Um, we try and service all the vehicles we can. Uh, as long as we still have the components to do so, we will. Um, if we still have the components, uh, we will supply the parts. Um, just have to bear with us since they're, they're older vehicles, it may take us a while longer to look up those parts and figure out what, what that uh, unit was built with 25, 30 years ago. And then down through the area, here's where all the magic happens. From this point down is our four-wheel drive bays. All these guys are doing some type of four by four. Right here, Roy, he is doing a, a transit. Um, next to him is Dan. Dan's working on a GM and you'll see that there's no set uh, priority. Uh, some of the guys can work on, on all the different models. Uh, a lot of the guys are just set to a specific model. So one guy will be like a Ford guy and the other guy will be a GM guy? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, there are some of the, some of the technicians that have been here for, for a long time. They can work on uh, the Ford, the GM, even the uh, older Series E. E-Series Ford van, they can work on those as well. And we work everything off of uh, pick list and work orders. So if you look up in the windshield, there's a number up there, at that W number, that's the work order number. We call it the key number as well. So we, we, uh, when the vehicle comes in, the work order is assigned to it. We label the key with the same number. Uh, you look down on the cart here, this is the work order number as well. We have a material uh, handler. What he'll do, he'll have a, a pick list. From his pick list, that will tell him everything that is needed to pull to make this vehicle four by four. So basically our material handler will load up their carts. And when the guys are ready for their next vehicle, they'll go get their next cart. Everything they need is right there on the cart. Some of the larger items, such as the, uh, the front end, the front differentials, uh, they have to use a crane, they'll load them on some of these lifts here. These are, these are 
uh, pneumatic lifts here so you can put air to them and they can lift them up, let them down. Um, so the heavier items they'll, they'll, they'll use the lifts for. Right now Liliana, this is a vehicle that she's receiving in from transportation. So she's on the last phase of it. She already uh, weighed the front end, now she's weighing the rear. Uh, so she's going to go over the scale, she has her paperwork, she'll catalog all the weights and then we'll enter all that in the system. This GM unit here that Dan's working on, this is actually for, uh, for Israel. Um, so this is an ambulance that's going to overseas to Israel. Uh, we are on all seven continents. We have units down in Antarctica for the National Science Foundation, uh, part of the U.S. Uh, McMurdo Bay Station. How do you ship them? I, mean, I guess on ships, right? Yes, these will, nice thing where we're located, we're about, uh, about an hour from the Baltimore docks, uh, maybe an hour and a half from the Wilmington docks, New Jersey docks, so up to, uh, up to the owner, whoever uh, orders the vehicles, uh, they can choose whatever docks where they're going to ship it out of, and we basically just take care of the transportation to get it to the docks. We don't set any of the vessel uh, transportation up, that's all handled by the by the customer. These here, you'll see some of the vents coming down in. Uh, on the GM, there's some plasma cutting, some welding. So that's basically what we call a smoke eater. So that will take care of the smoke so he's not breathing all that smoke in. So we'll pull it up in here and it's an air quality. Uh, in the next bay, we have one of our quality control technicians. Not only do we do the final quality control up there, but we also do a, what we call a, on uh, in air quality uh, inspection, so while they're on the line, before the vehicle comes down, because a, a lot of the bolts that they recheck and torque, make sure everything's up to spec, um, a lot of that's easier to reach while it's still in the air. So Ethan here, he's uh, our newest member of our quality control team. So he's going through, he's basically checking on every nut and bolt they put in there, he's making sure everything is fast and tight. And, uh, some of the bolts in that require certain torque specs. He'll check all the torque specs. He has a sign-off sheet. Um, basically here on the back side, there's numerous stages throughout the life of the vehicle as it travels through the shop. Uh, so here's your critical torques. He's gonna verify all them once he's done. Over here is the, the in-air inspection. Down here is your final inspection, final test drive. Up here is the pre-test drive. So we also, uh, once the vehicle is received by the transportation department, transportation also does a pre-test drive just to make sure that from the factory, you know, make sure there's no, nothing on the dash is lit up. If something's lit up, we'll take it to a local dealer, have them look at it. Uh, they'll make the repairs if needed. Over here in this area, this is our axle prep station. So basically, um, this is a solid axle. We still get in the uh, Ford E-Series cutaway chassis. They're still building that. And that will go on your, like your, uh, Type uh, three ambulance, your class uh, C RV kind of bodies. It's the big, it's the big uh, chassis RVs, um, like the Winnebago's, Coachman's of that nature. This is the beast that we still put in there. So it's a it's a heavy duty Dana, Dana 60 axle. Uh, Dana actually makes them for Ford. It's Ford's design. Uh, we purchased direct from Ford. Uh, so here we just make sure we got all the the correct gearing. Uh, we make sure. We install our hub locks, um, and basically it's the final inspection just to make sure that this axle will match the gears for the rear. This is for all of our IFS systems, our independent front suspensions. So here's our Ford uh, differentials for in the front. Up here's our, our GM differentials. So basically we store them in our axle uh, prep area as well. Over here is our crane, our overhead crane. Uh, it's used to to pick up our differentials and place on the pneumatic carts that we talked about earlier so the guys can wheel them to their area and then they can just lift it up and down uh, so the ease of uh, installation. These are the GMs here. Yep. We're still going down the line. We still have all these builders. All of them are in various stages. Uh, it looks like on this side, he's almost ready for the in-air inspection. Over here on this side, uh, Brandon's pretty much just getting, uh, he's probably about halfway through. 
He's pretty much took the front end out. Now he's prepping everything in the front. His, his next process would be to uh, what we call the cradle. He'll load the cradle into his cart, put the differential in it, and then they'll torque it, make all their specs, and then they'll install it all as one piece up into the vehicle. Here's some just manuals and, and uh, some of the uh, fixtures and whatnot that the guys will share uh, to build their, their, their vehicles. If they ever have questions, if they forget something, there's manuals up there, they can go back and look up the manual, or they can just ask the guy next to them. Uh, typically, these guys have been doing it for so long, uh, they don't really have too many questions. They don't really go back to the manuals at all. Cool. This area back in here, you'll see it better as we walk around, but this from this side down, the whole back end of the shop is our, our uh, welding department. And this is where a lot of the sub-assemblies happen. Uh, we design every bracket that goes on the vehicle. We actually engineer, we design it, we prototype it. Once we're ready, uh, after we're done with our testing and we're ready to release to production, uh, we'll use local vendors as much as possible. Um, most of our uh, parts, uh, everything that's a laser cut or has a break or a bend in it, um, it comes from a local vendor, uh, York Corrugating. So majority of our parts come from York Corrugating. They send in the individual components and basically back here in the weld department, uh, we have fixtures and jigs and they'll take all these uh, individual items and it's like a puzzle. They'll put them together using fixtures and jigs and then they'll, uh, they'll go ahead and, and uh, put all that together and then they'll weld it. So, you can see now some of the guys have it welded. We have a lot of business right now, which is good for us. Customers, you know, we understand uh, their concern because uh, the more business we have, we are pushing our lead times back longer, so the customer has to wait longer. It's a, it's a tough spot to be in. We're doing everything we can. We've, we've done more hires. We've installed more lifts. Uh, we're trying to get more efficient on every uh, possible aspect of the job we can. Um, we're trying to increase our production to meet the demand and stay on top of the demand. Um, and right now, as part of this, you can see that the shop is pretty crowded right now. Right here, we just got a load of, of items in. These are differentials, uh, so they just arrived. Um, they're back here in our loading dock area, so basically they'll take them back into the warehouse once they uncrate them and, and package them different. Here's one piece of, this is probably our most complex uh, item that we do back at Weld. This is just one component of it. I believe there's about, there's probably about 20 pieces that go together to make the final cross member. It's the torsion bar cross member for our GMs. So. It looks like something used to kill orcs. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the zombie apocalypse. You can put them out there on the bumper and take out the zombies with them. Then as you move forward, over here is some raw material we keep in-house. We do have a small in-house machine shop. Um, uh, my brother, Eric, he's, he's, uh, he runs all the CNC machines for us. We, have, uh, we use Haas machines. We have a, a Haas CNC lathe right now. We also have a, one of the Haas mill centers. This is the two newest areas. These are the two new lifts. We just installed these back in January. So this helped tremendously with our production as we were able to get two more technicians in here and build. Um, one of the ways we can uh, show you how much this has helped along with some of the other efficiencies that we, we've done throughout the last year, year and a half is uh, we put out about 960 units last year. This year we're on pace to, uh, our target was 1,200 vehicles, but we're on pace to exceed 1,200 for this year. So we are, we, we understand the customer's concerns uh, about our lead times and like I said before, we are doing everything within our power to get better at that and this is one example. Um, this year we, sh we, we believe we're going to be about 350 units more than we were last year. What are your lead times currently? Currently if you put an order in today, uh, September 6th, uh, we're scheduling that in April right now. That sounds, that sounds drastic. The reality of it is um, the OEs as well, um, that includes everything. So the OEs, they have their own lead times. So they're gonna take uh, however long they take. We've seen them you know, up to two to three months now. Um, 
they, they have a high demand, as you can tell. Everybody knows the economy is booming, which is great. And every aspect of, of the auto industry is, is booming as well. So everybody's lead times are, are moving uh, to a higher lead time as well. So at the end of it, it's, it's not as bad as what it sounds. It's not like you're waiting until April just for the four-wheel drive. You still have to, you're still gonna have to wait for about three months, four months, we actually get the vehicle at our facility anyways. Yeah. Now we're walking into our drive shaft department. Uh, we have two machines. You can see this one's turning at a slow rate right now. And basically that's set up. So we got this speed, he, I believe we just finished welding this, uh, this aluminum drive shaft. So it's nice, we can change our speeds uh, for different things. When you balance it, we can crank that speed up to like 1500, 2000 RPM so we can get a good balance uh, on the drive shaft and figure out where the weights have to go. Um, then when we're ready to weld it, we'll slow it down to a speed like this. And they have right here, you'll see this. This here, they can put their weld gun in here. This will hold the gun steady. So they just move it over to your seam and then you get a nice, uh, you, you, you got the, the part moving at a nice steady pace that stays with the welder and then you get nice, uh, nice welds on all your drive shafts. Back here is one of the steel shafts. So here he, didn't, he hasn't welded the ends yet. He basically, we basically pressed everything together. So you have your, your uh, weld yoke on this end here, press the tube on it. Here we have a, one of our slip ends, so that's on there, his next step. He'll first check his balance and then he'll weld, weld it. If he feels his balance is a, in a good area to start with, then he'll put his weld on and then after he's done welding, then they'll spin with a final balance. And then that way they'll place their weights on the final balance and then they'll tack weights on if it needs it. What's up with the copper hammer? That's just for your, yeah, copper's a little, this, this material is a little softer, so when you have to uh, tap things in place or whatever, the hammer takes the brunt of it and not the component. So here's your U-joint. That's used to press these down in, and then they can put the snap rings in to hold them in place. One more time, I just want to get a close-up. Yep. So the press we are just talking about, this here is your U-joint. This is one of your weld yoke ends. Basically, they'll take the U-joint, they'll use that press, they'll press it down in. And once it gets past inside here, there's a little rim where the snap ring fits in. Then they'll put the snap ring in and then that holds the whole U-joint in place. The reason that drive shaft is critical is because when we put the four-wheel drive system into the van, we are adding a transfer case. With that transfer case on the back side of the transmission, it's going to shorten your rear drive shaft. So we'll either build the drive shaft from scratch or on some of the larger vehicles where it might be a two-piece drive shaft, uh, we'll actually take a section of it and we'll shorten that down to the two-piece shafts. And um, then also you have to have a front drive shaft now for the front end uh, to give you your four wheel drive. Uh, most of our front shafts we are uh, doing in house as well. Over here is our uh, paint uh, area. This is basically paint prep and we do painting uh, back behind those curtains. Right now you'll see on the floor. On the floor you'll see what we talked about earlier back in the weld, so a lot of this is coming out of our weld department. Uh, of course you can't have it painted, you got to get a good weld, so you got to have clean metal for the welds. So once they're done welding, once it's cooled off, we bring it up here, we prep it out here for paint. Uh, that means we clean it, uh, we sand it, and we clean it, and then once that's ready to go into the paint booth, we'll pull it in the paint booth, and then we'll paint everything with our epoxy black paint, and then from there it goes on the shelves once it's dried into inventory. Cool. There's some of our finished drive shafts. We just came out of the drive shaft department as well. Here's some of the finished drive shafts. They also, after they're done with it, the steel ones will get painted. Our aluminum shafts, of course, we don't paint the aluminum shafts. And the paint preserves them, right? So if it's aluminum, it won't rust, but if it's uh, right. painted, the, it also Yes, the, the, whole idea, the whole idea behind the paint is like any other thing, like we have bare metal. If you just put that out, you're gonna have a lot of surface rust right away. Um, so basically, you either powder coat, you do some kind of chemical process on it, or you can paint the, the parts. Most everything underneath the vehicle is painted. Um, uh, some of the manufacturers will use an undercoating process on there as well. Uh, our parts we paint uh, with an epoxy style paint and then we'll add them to the bottom of the chassis and we're ready to go. 
And back behind you is our in-house machine shop. In the far back, you can see the Haas machines. That's the mill center. The gray over here to the left of that is the Haas lathe. This is here is our Coltenbach um, saw. This is an automated feed, so it helps a lot. So we can, we can program it using uh, the switches and dials. Uh, we can program the lengths where we want it to be, and then we can just load material in here. We can put like a 20 piece, uh, 20 foot long piece of material in here, and then we may only cut that at three inch sections, and then that saw, once you load it in there, once you, once you verify your first cut and have it prepped and it's cutting correctly, we just go ahead, we can hit that, and then we can walk away and go to another area of the machine shop and you know two hours later it'll be through the 20 feet of material and then they can just go and load more material. You're probably just seeing some more parts. These are the parts that came out of paint. So they're sitting here. The larger parts they usually let sit here and then the technicians will come over with their carts and they'll load them on their carts. Uh, these are what we call the cradle in the, in the transit. So this is design. This is, how, this is the beauty of the, of the cradle for the transit, this is where the differential sits. So we've designed all this so we can mount the differential to that and then we do all that outside the vehicle and once they verify all the torques on the, on the differential, they just take the whole cradle, lift it up with their, with their pneumatic tables, they lift, lift it into place and then they, uh, there's four bolts that hold the cradles in place and then once they do that, then your differential set, your cradle set and away you go. These axles straight from, from Ford, they don't fit uh, inside the van and that's where we come in. We, we engineer and we design certain brackets uh, to make the, the, the salt axle fit in the van and we have brackets that go on the frame of the van as well so they can mate together. So basically uh, before the, uh, the, the gear department, the axle prep department, before they receive the axle it's back in the weld department. And the weld department is cutting some of the uh, some of the brackets off the Ford that we don't use and then we put uh, we'll weld on the brackets that we've designed for the van. And this is a factory Ford? This is a factory Ford axle, yes. And like I said, we just cut some of the, air, some of the components that come with Ford. This, this is for their, their F250-350 uh, truck. Mm -hmm. um, and the frames are a little different, so you can't, it, does, it just doesn't bolt in like everyone oh, thinks. Right so yeah, we design, we put a, that's where all of our engineering and design work comes in. And after we finalize our builds, um, we go ahead and the weld department will uh, they'll take material off and then they have fixtures that set all of our brackets in place because it's critical to have the right spacing and have it set right so the axle, every axle is sitting in there the same exact way because once the axle is in there that's going to determine a lot. If you have the axle off to one side or the other or it's tilted this way or that way then you're messing with alignments and everything like that so it's key to get your axle to sit in the vehicle correctly. Once they're done it goes to the axle prep like we said earlier, he puts on the, the hub locks. He'll verify that the, the correct gearing's in place. Um, he'll also put on the calipers. Uh, and then after all that, it comes over to paint, and then we paint everything that we welded, because that's still bare metal. We have a, a, a small area of our business. We do some specialty uh, builds as well. Um, we also take care of some of the accessories that we offer. Some of the clients will will want some extra uh, bells and whistles added to their vehicle. If, uh, if it's approved, if, if, if it's an approved accessory, we can do that over in this area as well. This item here that you're looking at, this is actually our, our last uh, right-hand drive uh, kit that we have. This is going over to a hotel in, uh, I, believe, I believe it's in London. Um, I know it's going to England, but I'm pretty sure that the, it's a hotel in, in, uh, in London that's uh, ordered this vehicle. Um, I guess I'm curious, why would they just not buy an, a British van or a Mercedes? They specifically want that. Yeah, um, I don't know what, what really drives them uh, to, to have the right-hand drive, but I do know that the American uh, automakers have always had a strong foothold across the world. Um, that's why they were called the Big Three at one point. Um, so I know they have a lot of infrastructure in, in uh, other countries. Uh, so I don't know if it's just a, a ease of service that they do have GM uh, dealerships and whatnot over there that they can still service the vehicle. 
Uh, I don't know if it's a um, uh, difference in cost, if it's more cost effective yeah. to take a GM instead of buying something from, say, a Mercedes or whatever. Um, and believe it or not, I, I don't think that everything built in Europe is actually right-hand drive either. So, but don't quote me on that. But I believe the other factor for some of the other uh, foreign countries was America always had a true body on frame uh, kind of vehicle. Whereas the Transits, the Mercedes, they're a unibody. Um, we had unibodies here. Uh, GM used to have unibodies. They, they did away with their unibody, went to a body on frame. Dodge ran uni, uh, used to run unibodies as well. So basically here in the States, it was body on frame on the E-Series and the GM for the last 25 years, 30 years. And what, um, just curious, what are some of the benefits of frame on, how did body you work frame? The, the body on frame, it sort of isolates, um, gives you a better ride. Uh, it reduces a lot of the noise. Um, just think of it as a unibody is basically just a complete shell. The whole body, everything is right there, even what they would call the subframe. You know, everything just attaches right to that body. So with a, with a body on frame, you actually have a frame. Then you have basically what they call body mounts, and they're, they're like almost like rubber disc. So they isolate the body, so the body will give you a little bit of sway, so it's not, it's not as hard of a ride. It gives you a little bit uh, uh, more ease in the ride, and that also helps dampen and deafen some of the noise. Like with a unibody, if it's coming up from the tires, it's going to go to the next vibrate. component, right to the next component. Since everything's attached, it's just going to vibrate, and you're going to hear it inside the van as well. So with, uh, with a unibody, you have to try and provide as much uh, sound deadening uh, material inside the vehicle compared to uh, the, the old body on frame, so. That's why my Sprinter van sounds like an aquarium when I'm driving down the road. That's right. Now we're basically coming full circle. Now we're back to where we started. We're back here to our scales. Um, so once the vehicles are finished over here, again, our transportation department will weigh them with the finished weights, record that, compare them to how the vehicle was when we received it, and we can tell how much weight we've added. Uh, up here is this, this board here. This gives our technicians uh, an idea of how many we're building uh, each and every day. This board gets updated. Uh, so, so far we've built 10 uh, for September. Um, we were able to push out 118 units uh, for August. Okay, that wraps it up. Thanks for uh, joining me on the tour of Quigley Motor Company. Uh, for more information, you can look us up on quigley4x4.com. Right on, dude. All right. Thank you very yep. much. Yep, good.